versus Wolf. Koenig versus Wolf. I'm Doug Wolf, and I've got uh, General Manager Clay Koenig with me. And Hi, Doug. You've got a, a nice editorial this week. Yeah, it's on local government. You know, I went to that pancakes and politics yeah. breakfast on uh, Friday. They had uh, a panel of seven politicians up there. Four of them were from the state side. Three were from the local side. Uh, they did some questions and answers afterwards. All questions were directed towards the state. Not one the state candidate. Yes, towards state candidates. Not one question directed towards local candidates, and the local government is what really affects us directly. Mm -hmm. Well, let's take local government because, like, as far as like the local local government, down even further than you were at, uh, mayor, city council, park district, school boards. Okay, those races don't come until next April. Correct. A year from April. A year from now. And uh, to me. Those are the most important races. Why? They're setting your local property taxes, especially the school district. All right, they're deciding whether your property taxes go up or down. They're doing all kinds of other local taxes. They set the water rates, garbage rates. Um, those people are the ones who are impacting your pocketbook the most. Yes. Now, we, we talk about the state people doing it. They do. You know, they raise the sales tax. Or, in this case, they're actually eliminating completely the grocery tax for good. Okay. A couple of years ago, it was a temporary thing, and now they're eliminating it for good. Um, doesn't mean a whole lot to the average family, but it's a few bucks a year. But it's these local candidates that impact your life on a day-to-day -day basis. So when I look at myself when I was younger, you know, I remember when I registered to vote when I was 18, I went down to the post office. It was a big deal to me. It was a big deal. I, I think my parents said it was a big deal. It was the law going down there. But I had no intention of local government back then, had no interest. I mean, kids, they don't have interest in that. Um, you see some of the kids that, you know, want to excel in business and everything, they, they gravitate towards that. But I guess the question is, how do we get people involved with the local government? Because like you said, those are the ones that impact us the most. What do you think would be ideas and ways to get people involved, the younger people? To get the younger people yes. involved? Maybe yes. if you have more younger people running, because you can run at 18 or 21. Sure. Depending on what, what you're running for. But, I mean, if those people had maybe some, some, somebody they could relate to, I think they'd be better off. Okay. We'll talk more about this, but uh, we've got to take a break. We'll come back and talk more. All right. You're watching Koenig versus Wolf, and this week we're talking about local government. Local government. And we were talking about maybe getting younger people involved. You made a good point in your editorial that if even if you just go and sit as a poll watcher on Election Day, you have to go to your county clerk's office and sign up. And they'll train you how to do it. Yeah. It's a one-day job. Yeah, 150 judge. bucks for the day. $150. How is there not a line of people out the door for the clerk's office? They don't know it's 150 bucks, I'll bet. Okay. <laughs> well, we've covered that story. Have you ever done any election judges or anything like that? I can't because of my job here. Understood. Understood. And yeah. since I was old enough to vote practically, I've been here. <laughs> On and, and off, but here. All right. So, but you have local politics in your family, of course. I do. All right. Yeah. So how did that come about? How did she come about? I know the story, the background story, but her interest and, in, you know, continue to run. She does a fabulous job. Yeah. Thank you. Know. She uh, wanted to run for city council. So she did and uh, did very well in her first time out. I think she was second out of the balloting and there was like four or five seats open. So, you know, she got one of the seats. So it worked out well for her and she's done well ever since. So she's done a tremendous job. She really has, That is a tough job. Yeah. She did city council from 2009 to 2015 and 2015 to today. She's been the mayor. So if I go to my kids, okay, I've got 20 year old and I say, son, I'd love for you to get involved with local politics. If that interests you, I'm not going to push them something they're not interested in, but how do they go about it? They've registered. They've already got it. They can go down to the clerk's office, register for this, right. for this one well, day. You have a, you, if you're running for office, they have a, a period of time where you have to get signatures on a petition. Correct. You know, you just go door to door or stand downtown and wait for people up by. I'm going to run for a uh, dog catcher. Would you, would you sign this petition so I can get on the ballot? Yeah. And the, only, the only requirement is they have to uh, be a resident of the city that they're in. I have another question. You know, I was thinking about this. Some of these positions seem nonpartisan. Yeah, like uh, city council mayor. They're not Republican, not Democrat, yet you run nonpartisan. What makes it partisan versus not partisan? Whether you ha it's, you're in a race that's Republican or Democrat, you have I mean, to declare I, a party. I know it's that simple, but I mean, why? Why do you think they put some of those, those jobs as far as... It was before I was born. Okay. 
and I'm old. <laughs> so it, was, it goes way back. It goes way back. Do you think that in central Illinois, we have good city governments at these different towns, locations? Yeah, and some of them, yeah. All Not all of them. All benefiting businesses, of course. That's what they're trying to do, right? Synergy for business. I don't necessarily think that's the case. What do you think the case is? I think they try to do what's best for the community. I don't think they're coming in just to do stuff for business. You've got a lot of people who run who are supported by unions. You have a lot of union members on and off the council. Sure. The Decatur Council I'm talking about. So I don't think it's just solely businesses. Well, I'm going to talk to my son about it just to you know, gauge his interest. I'm going to find out what, what he thinks. He likes speaking to people. What a great way to do it, you know, yeah. especially if you can make some local changes. And start like on something small like, like a city council or yeah. park board or something like that. Richland Community College Board. You know. We have plenty of boards around here, that's for sure. Oh, yeah. And they need people a lot of times. Sometimes getting candidates is difficult. City council usually has a whole bunch of candidates. But, uh, yeah, it's a good way to start. He's how old? 20. Start him young. I'm going to try. Even if he doesn't win, he'll get the experience to go on a few years later and know what to do. Sure, sure. Well, thanks, Doug. I appreciate it. We're going to have, um, you know, we have elections coming up, of course. We have the primary. We've got the general at the end of the year. Um, we're going to have a lot of politics going on between now and then. All right. And I'm going to have a lot of questions for you, Doug. You I hope you have a lot of answers. I, I have no answers. You're watching Koenig versus Wolf, guys.